The RTX 4090 Ti might already be here. HDMI 2.1 is uh, really, really confusing. And Sony, bunch of turds coming out with their own faceplates. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And as mentioned at the end of yesterday's episode, I'm currently on the road because our son has to get surgery as of this morning. So we had to travel to Philadelphia in order to get that done. So I am filming hot news from our hotel room as we await having to wake up at 4 30 to drive to be at the hospital by 5 45 so that's you're getting hot news like this and this is how we're finding out about the rtx 4090 ti and potentially even the rx 7000 series gpus because miners already have them, at least according to a Flexpool report that is showing that the device IDs that are being used to mine some Ethereum is the RTX 4090 Ti as well as some other ones. The RX 7000 OC test and RX 7000 control test being listed on this brand new Ethereum mining company who is running at 2.47 terahash per second on these GPUs. You can see the 4090 Ti itself is accounting for 1.22 terahash, which is absolutely absurd and likely is number one, not the only reason that it's fake, but a very valid reason why it's fake because NVIDIA AMD would not be testing these out at a new mining operation. And in order to reach 1.2 to 1.3 terahash, you would need 10,000 RTX 3090s, which is obviously a massive number that isn't actually likely on top of the fact that we're not finding out about this from sort of, sort of mining pool. These cards likely aren't even ready to launch until the end of next year. There's no way that you you could actually convince me that they were up and running in a mining pool at the current time, about a year ahead of launch and running at the speeds that they are and not some sort of engineering sample limited capacity. So this is likely fake, but it's not just the RTX 4090 Ti and RX 7000 that we're seeing. They're also showing off that they have the Ada Loveless AD102 GPUs as well as RDNA 3 MCM GPUs with 32 gigabytes of DDR6. This is actually likely very easy to just fake by modifying device IDs in whatever operating system you happen to be using. So don't necessarily, if you see this out on the internet, don't take it for reals. I know the vast majority of our audience would like to think that AMD and Nvidia are trying to make their money directly off of miners and even pitching this towards miners before regular consumers can get their hands on it, but I wouldn't necessarily trust that that's exactly happening. But what is happening is today's video sponsor. My friends, The Ridge is sponsoring today's video and they traveled with me all the way from my home to here in Philly because they're just so easy to put in my pocket because it's the modern wallet built for everyday carry. Gone are the days of big bulky wallets that you have to sit on and be uncomfortable while driving across the entire state of Pennsylvania. No longer, because this is made to go in your front pocket. It can hold up to 12 cards, plus has room for cash, and it either has a cash strap or a money clip setup. And there's over 30 colors and styles, including my personal favorite, the carbon fire that I have here, as well as burnt titanium, and people love them. There's over 40,000 five-star reviews on them and the durable material means that they each come with a lifetime warranty and if you don't absolutely love yours ridge will let you send it back after you test drive it for 45 days for a full refund i love my ridge wallet it comes with me everywhere i go and if you want to pick up yours you can go to ridge.com forward slash ufd which is linked in the video description and you get 10 percent off with that purchase again that's ridge.com forward slash ufd big thanks to the ridge for sponsoring today's video but while we talked about nvidia and the next generation of GPUs being found in mining and that being likely fake. What is real is a new AMD mining GPU that's hitting the streets. These things are now being brought to you by XFX as the BC160 GPUs that are capable of hitting up to 70 mega hash per second and 150 watts with two stacks of four gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which makes them quite quick. But this hopefully won't necessarily take away from regular consumer GPUs. However, the response that a lot of people give towards the whole GPU shortage issue is hey, why don't you just sell dedicated mining GPUs so that people can stop buying gaming graphics cards? And then this happens and it doesn't actually affect the graphics card shortage at all. Would they just buy both? And that really hurts the end consumer. But we also now have information on the MX550 coming out from NVIDIA. We're expecting this to get unveiled as of January 4th. Gonna have two gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM and likely be launched in conjunction with Intel's 12th gen laptops. And based on preliminary benchmarks, it's roughly 15% faster than the MX450 450 that was previously out. And what's out right now is UFD deals, my friends. I'm bringing you the hottest tech deals that I can find on the internet. And don't forget that we relaunched the UFD deals website as of yesterday. So go to ufd.deals or click the link in the video description to find all the deals that I've talked about today, as well
well as other ones from the past or just ones that I add as the day goes on. But first up, we have a GPU setup, which is the RX 6600 plus a B550 from Gigabyte going for $535 over on Newegg. It's not a great price, but it's a readily available GPU that you can pick up from Newegg. And then Corsair also has their IQ 220T Airflow on sale for $75 after a $20 rebate card on Newegg. And in case you're looking to pick up a MacBook Air with an M1 chip this holiday season, they currently are going for $200 off over on Best Buy for $79.99. And speaking of things being priced off, oh my gosh, there's so much red in the market today. Let's get into the crypto stocks. Bitcoin down 3.5% on the day to be at 46.925. That is pretty gosh dang low. It's under $900 billion market cap. I haven't seen it that low in quite some many moons, at least when I've been filming. Ethereum also down 4.6% to sit at 37.86. Dogecoin also continuing that drop 4.37% to sit at 15.7 cents. But the meme stocks got absolutely slaughtered today. GameStop down 14% roughly to sit at 136.88 off of its all-time high of roughly $483. AMC down 15% on a day to sit at 23.24. Just not a good day in the market at all. And it wasn't a good day when Apple launched AirTags and people were putting them in cars and on people to track them, to stalk them, to steal the vehicle. So uh, Apple's trying to make it so that doesn't happen by releasing an Android app that allows you to detect AirTags that are removed from the person who placed them for any amount longer than 10 minutes and you can get an alert on your Android device that will let you know that these air tags are nearby and then you can potentially find it by playing a noise if it's been separated for more than 10 minutes so that you can see oh hey somebody put an air tags in my backpack that I wasn't expecting and now I can disable it by taking out the battery Apple trying to think forward on this you don't actually need an Apple account to download and use this app so they're trying to protect from a problem that they themselves created and a problem that I had all the time was using WhatsApp and having companies what at me and then try to determine their response by whether or not I read their WhatsApp, even though I didn't want them contacting me on my private phone in the first place. Well, now WhatsApp's getting rid of that. They will no longer allow strangers to have read receipts or your last scene or your stories by making it easier for people to remain anonymous if you don't actually have contact with that person previously, which is something I needed desperately, especially when I was in South Africa and the method of business was over WhatsApp. And I just, so many companies will message you and then be like, hey, I saw that you were on online 10 minutes ago, why didn't you respond? Because I have a life, my friends. I'm not here by your beck and call. And what's here no longer, my friends, for anybody who remembers the old days, I don't because I was not really in the PC gaming scene at that time, but 3D Now from AMD is officially dead as that's being removed from Linux. The instruction set on that being removed. It was used on CPUs from AMD of K6-2 to Bulldozer, and I don't, this means nothing to me, but in case it means something to you, that's dead. But what also means something to some people but not me, is Google Toolbar is now dead, being removed from Internet Explorer just in time for it to not pass its 21st birthday. This is one of the very few parts of Google that actually survived by not having its name changed, its design function changed, and actually lasted 20 whole years, which is actually crazy, but Google Toolbar for Internet Explorer now dead. And what's also dead is the HDMI standard because the HDMI specification conglomeration that's out there has said that, hey, everything's HDMI 2.1 as long as it's HDMI 2.0. Yes, my friends, the HDMI 2.1 spec is now meaningless because we thought that it meant you could get 4K 120 hertz support without having to use any sort of display stream compression with variable refresh rate technology and a whole bunch of other stuff. But now after being pressed on a TV from Xiaomi that had HDMI 2.1 asterisk and being asked, hey, this isn't HDMI 2.1. It doesn't have all of the specs that meet HDMI 2.1. The HDMI forum who's behind the HDMI standard said that HDMI 2.0 no longer exists, so you can't call anything HDMI 2.0. So if it was HDMI 2.0 compatible, it's now HDMI 2.1, and the only thing that they want is that you can say it's HDMI 2.1, but you have to disclose the feature set that it actually has, but even if it doesn't support all of it, it's now HDMI 2.1. So if you're gonna be buying a brand new television this holiday season or a monitor, just maybe potentially look out for that, even though it might have HDMI 2.1 standard 
weird. That doesn't actually mean that it's supporting the technologies that come with it. Speaking of supporting technologies, Toyota wants to support more cash in their wallets for basic technology that they think is actually helping the consumer, but isn't because they're forcing their users who have remote start on their key fobs to pay $8 a month for a feature that used to be part of their like remote connect package that they had, but only lasted for three years for free. And anybody who bought one of their Toyotas back in 2018 is now finding out, hey, the remote start on the key fob no longer works. It's not just remote start over an app, but actually on the physical device itself, which honestly makes no sense. This actually puts a bad taste of Toyota in my mouth. Probably shouldn't be putting Toyota in my mouth. But while I can understand potentially charging consumers for the use of cloud features or remote services that make it so that I can start the car from inside my house because somebody has to pay for the server, somebody has to pay for that upkeep, I get that. The fact that it's already on the key fob and they're removing that service makes absolutely no sense besides a money grab that I just am not in favor of, but subscriptions, DLC, coming to your car. It's here, my friends, get ready for it. Speaking of money grabs, though, Xbox has one for you. You remember the red ring of death on the Xbox or was it the Xbox 360? I can't remember. I wasn't an Xbox boy growing up, but you can get a poster of it over on Microsoft's or Xbox's website for $25 to commemorate your console dying. How, how far are we moved? Are, are we allowed to joke about this now? Are we allowed to actually make meme posters of the red ring of death? That's, I don't know if that's in good taste, Microsoft. What do you guys think of the red ring of death poster? Let me know down below in the comments and I'll let you know that Final Fantasy VII Remake's PC launch now has the PC requirements listed in case you want the minimum and the recommended system requirements. You can check the link in the video description, but a GTX 780 or an RX 480 is the minimum and the 1080 or the RX 5700 are the recommended for 1440p. But while we're on the topic of Sony things, Final Fantasy, that's the segue that I'm going with here. Sony announcing their own custom colored faceplates to come out to the PlayStation 5, but they're not calling it faceplates, even though that's what they originally called it. Now they're just called console covers and they're coming out in five new colors as you can see here and they're going to cost you $55 each. They're not launching immediately in January. The Midnight Black and Cosmic Red will be available and then the other ones will be available in the first half of next year. This obviously explains the whole dbrand cease and desist that was going on. Sony was clearly gearing up for this launch that is now officially here. I do like the pink and the blue because those are kind of hot news colors but I can't necessarily support Sony and all that they're doing here with just how they've gone about the entire charade of selling these faceplates. And they might sell more consoles by potentially upping the power in the PlayStation 5 Pro because now there's a new patent that's been debuted of a multi-chip module that could potentially be coming out to the next generation PlayStation of fusing two APUs together by using an interconnect and just kind of almost doing the exact same thing they did for the PS4 Pro, which was just fuse two of the GPUs together and make it slightly faster, but they didn't upgrade the CPU. So it didn't really make it all that much faster. Anyways, it's just a patent, so this doesn't actually mean that we're going to be getting this on the PlayStation 5 Pro, but there's at least some indication that they might con be considering going that route. And I'm going to go the route of getting out of here and being done with this episode of Hot News. This was a weird one. Obviously, doing this from a hotel room is not my normal speed, but hopefully I will be back tomorrow either on the road or in my normal office to deliver you hot news. And hopefully the surgery goes well and I'll keep you all updated on that. Anyways, I'm your Brett host. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast. Cheers.